More you talk now. Hi, everybody. This is Steve Russo from You Talk, and uh, we have got a great show for you today. Just an amazing guest. We hope you're going to enjoy her. Hi, Steve. How are you? <laughs> Good. How is, how are you? Doing well. Great to have you. Our guest is amazing. She is a fashion designer. Her name is Hollis Coleman'sberger. You got it. <laughs> she, I was working hard it's, to make sure I said it right. I know it's a long one, but honestly, if you just sound it out, it, it, it's an easy one. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah, hey, it's great to see you. Thank you for taking time to be with us. Um, you have your own company called By Hollis, which we're going to talk about. So let's jump right in. When did you first get started? I, I have, we haven't talked so much about the age when you got started, yeah. and which I think is kind of fascinating. Yeah, right. So I started when I was 14, actually. Um, no, seriously? Yeah, really. I was a soccer player growing up, but I always knew I wanted to be in fashion. And so I remember out at a tournament and I saw a heat press being used. You know, that like the giant irons almost that would put like right there in front of you. Um, do the t-shirt on. thing. Yeah. Yeah, for t-shirts. So I always yeah. got those at soccer tournaments. And then I was watching them do it. And I was like, I could totally do something with this. So, you know, I wrote up a little business plan as, as the best that a 14 year old could do. And <laughs> that is I, so cool. I know. I just, I don't know. I, I always felt like a, a knack for starting things and, and trying to sell things mm-hmm. and pitch things. So um, yeah, so then I, I wrote that up and started pitching it to family and friends. And I was lucky enough to get um, an investment, a few investments um, wow. to get my own machinery and blank t-shirts. And from there, it was just trial and error. In middle school, I remember I was down in the basement just trying to figure out how to print with this thing. YouTube was my best friend, YouTube tutorials. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, it was looking back, it was just such a fun time. And I, you know, I really think I was very curious to learn. And, and now being in the industry and being in, in fashion school now, yeah. um, I love that that was the first step. You know what I mean? The first little like dipping sure. my toe in the water. But, sure. Yeah. That is so cool. So, I mean, were you one of those little girls who was always doing dress up and, and trying different things and putting outfits together or not that really? You, you were know, a soccer player. Yeah. I, I don't know if I really, really was necessarily. I think it, I was just a nice balance between always wanting to sell things. I always just had this mind for, for business. And I also... Um, something that I attribute to why I got into it is my father, he's an entrepreneur as well. Um, okay. And so I always saw him, you know, kind of doing his thing, starting mm-hmm. different companies. When I was younger, he had, um, he, he did everything from jelly shoe factory to tent <laughs> rental companies to, yeah, to then arcade games when I was like young. So we used to go down to Baltimore, Maryland. I used to test out all these arcade games with him. <laughs> and now he's in data analytics in the healthcare field. So I've just seen wow. him like hustle it out. And I relate to him so much in that Mm -hmm. sense that I'm, you know, I I see the world how he does. So I say that's where I get my more like entrepreneurial knack from. And then my mother has always been, um, had a keen eye for interior design. So I've I've always thought, yeah. So I, I think those two balance between, you know, my mom's love for interiors and just, she has amazing style overall um she's always been big on like a timeless classic style and that's something mm-hmm. that definitely translated down to me rather than and i'm happy you did now being in fashion school rather than sure. just jumping on trends and stuff so it's more about you know slowly building your style and finding things that'll last and so it, the combination of both of those factors both of my parents i think is what kind of here i am you know with, you know that's awesome because that's a it's a great combination and and i like that the spirit of saying, hey, I want to try these things. I want to do this. I'm going to think outside the box. I'm going to, yeah. I find myself doing that as well in, in just, I'm going to challenge the status quo. I'm going to be innovative and, you know, okay, raise your eyebrows at me, you know, saying, oh, what is this guy really doing? Eh, that's fine. That's cool. You start keep doing somewhere, it. right? Yeah, I know. Exactly. And it's so fun to just, to just jump in somewhere. And, and even now, like in school, you know, we, we start off with all these new projects and you feel so silly learning a new skill in the beginning or trying something new and then give it, you know, you just put in the effort day to day and you'll see mega growth. So it's definitely <laughs> something I've learned and I, I love about it. Now you're in school for fashion design, but you've yes. been doing it for several years. You've got your own company, your own brand. Yeah. How does that work? I mean, are professors going, Hey, come here, come here. Now tell me how you do this. I mean, cause that's I, interesting. Yeah, I think it was the biggest blessing for me to have all that experience because I would say I even learned more about the business side of fashion 
which is something, you know, I'm in school for fashion design. So I am literally cutting and sewing and drawing. And, you know, there's okay. a lot of like other, other things. Like I, I still have to do gen eds and we do sure. some boring stuff too, but it's a lot of that really hands-on um, mm. fashion design. So, so having that experience. So basically I'll, I'll say a little bit more <laughs> with, with by Hollis is that I started printing um, and then things kind of picked up steam. Um, and I, I went from me heat pressing everything myself to working with a local screen printing shop um, huh. in, okay. in Pennsylvania where I'm from. Yeah. Okay. And so it, it kind of grew, um, grew with, uh, you know, the bigger the audience. I, I had to <laughs> like accompany that with um, my process of things. So from there, um, you know, I was doing lots of pop-up shops um, mm-hmm. in, in Pennsylvania, which gave me like really a hands-on experience with customers and how they look at things. And I always would watch like when they go by, what do they notice and what do they, oh, you know, nice. what colors are they picking up on or what styles? And so I classify that, I would call that as research. Like that research Absolutely. in the beginning was, was so crucial for me now in fashion school, especially, you know, mm. when we're, we're starting with de- drawing designs and then sewing designs, I really can look at it and be like, okay, what, what can sell in this? How can I um, make this translate to multiple different um, types of people, different customers? So it really taught me a lot about that. And, you know, yeah. that is, that's awesome because you're, it's like you're grabbing and learning, grabbing and learning, observing, putting the pieces together, kind of sorting through things, which mm-hmm. is brilliant, which that applies to so much of life, really. You know, it's yeah. being a constant learner. Um, you know, I, I'm a drummer, uh, one of the many hats I wear, and I, I'll never forget uh, my very first drum teacher said, Steve, I want you to learn something from every drummer you see. And I said, Bill, some of these guys couldn't beat their way out of a wet paper bag. And he goes, dude, <laughs> your attitude stinks. He said, maybe it's the way they tune one drum. It's one fill. It's just something. And, you know, there's so much truth to that. And that's exactly what you're doing, you know, in, in, in researching. And, and do you find then that it has been worthwhile going to fashion school? Yeah. So I think a lot has changed just this year about my industry. So mm-hmm. I feel like that could be a whole different question. But yeah, I think it's definitely worth it for the fact that we learn really um, hands on technical skills. Mm-hmm. And it makes me very grateful that I went to FIT. So I go to the Fashion Institute of Technology um, in Manhattan. That's where I am, I am now. Oh, that's um, awesome. And compared to other fashion schools, FIT is um, super technical. So we are learning how to do te- like spec sheets and tech packs that we send over to manufacturers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Broad, and we're learning versus I, I feel like in my experience with other fashion programs, it's very creative based, which uh-huh. is wonderful. You know, they yes, pump out yes. such, such amazingly creative kids. And, and they're at my school, like there's so many super talented kids with what they can do. But I think that when we have that extra um, mm-hmm. advantage of knowing how to spec things and knowing everything there's to know about knitwear, more or less, like, you know, it's just so that extra leverage helps us going into the industry now where there's a lot less jobs available, where there's not, you know, people aren't just going sure. out and buying crazy ball gowns for the heck of it. Like we need practical clothing right mm-hmm. now. So that's why I think it's worth it, especially for FIT. So little plug there for FIT. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, this is, a, and, and we got to talk more about by Hollis. It, it um, but it's interesting that there's so much that goes into producing mm, a shirt, yeah. a dress, you know, whatever it happens to be. Let me ask you this. Where does your inspiration come from? Yeah, I, you know, I think for me, it comes from seeing what's out there in the world. I'm really big on, you know, trying to live as, in many places as I can. So mm-hmm. as of now, I've, I've lived one year in Portugal. I've lived almost two years now in New York, and I've lived um, one year in Italy as well. Oh, nice. So th- those experiences abroad, so I've, had, I've had about like two years over in Europe. Mm-hmm. And I think those have... Um, impacted me the most. And even like when I was younger, I would do trips out to California to visit family and Mm -hmm. seeing the coast. Like that's what first inspired me to start by Hollis. It kind of has this underlying like surf shop vibe. And that I actually, I built the website um, the summer I went, I took a trip to California and drove the coast. So um, I I think like for me, just seeing what's out there and, um, you know, pulling inspiration from different like textiles and cultures and Mm -hmm, all these different mm -hmm. things that that's what really gets my head you know, spinning and, and <laughs> ideas churning. So, no, you know, it's so cool to be in other cultures because you can learn so Definitely. much. Whether it's the food, whether it's the art, whether it's the the um, clothes, uh, just having a conversation with somebody. You know, it, uh, that just a little you know random thought throwing out there to our audience. If you haven't traveled, when all of this is done and you can make it a point. I mean, it, it's, it's so Definitely. rich, you know, there's so just so many very cool things. Okay. 
your inspiration comes from a lot of different places. Would you say that you're passionate about any particular thing when it comes to fashion? Yeah, I feel like I wouldn't say I have one like very straight on passion. I'm inspired Mm -hmm. by a lot of different things. I'm inspired by a lot of, like I said, from my mother, kind of interiors Mm -hmm. um, and architecture. I look at that a lot. Um, I look at botanicals a lot. I look at, you know, like beaches and and just everything that has to do with the the color scheme there. Um, So I have a lot of different draws and inspirations, but overall I would say my passion is for um, really building a style and, and, and not just, okay. like I said, jumping onto trends. It's something that when I'm older, I want to make sure um, my company, because I, I would love to start another like bigger company with employees one day. Um, I, I think um, my kind of like area I'm going to work on is for especially young girls. Um, there's just a lot of fast fashion out there and it's about mm-hmm. staying on top of the next trend. And it's like, mm-hmm. I, I don't agree with that. I think that, um, you know, it, it takes time to build your style. And I think there's a lot of pressure to just jump on and, and just start buying things, buying things. And I, and I think really fashion becomes really special when you have pieces that, you know, you can connect back to a place or a person or oh, a memory. Yes. And yes. so that's really what I want to emphasize and bring back to the industry. Cause I feel like we're kind of, kind of losing that and just in, in making like really special pieces. And if things break, you don't just throw it out, you fix it. You know? Mm-hmm. So I think that's kind of what um, my passion is, I would say in the industry, along with um, sustainability. It's kind of, I, I always knew I wanted to incorporate and now it's just so vital in the industry you know fashion design is the second most polluting industry behind oil really so yes <laughs> so it did is, not know that yeah it is it is w- once i got in so I, you know i was like oh i want to come into fashion i want to fix you know work on sus- sustainability i got in and i was like holy cow this is a huge mountain to climb like it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a hurdle and it's intimidating it really is to yeah to even because no company will ever be sustainable if you're if you're producing something it can't be sustainable and that's why there's a lot of greenwashing going on these days with companies saying oh this yes. is sustainable this is sustainable yes. but i think overall um you got to you know do your best where you can. And I think there's a lot of innovation that's going on right now in terms of fabrications and, and technology we're introducing mm-hmm. um, with, within fabrics. And, and I'm really lucky to be learning about that in school right now. Like one of my professors, for example, works at a company where they're making fabric out of like algae in, in the sea. So really? That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, there's so many. And of course, like you've probably seen like uh, shoes made out of plastic bottles. Yes. And so yes. there's a lot of innovation happening, but it's going to take, it's going to take a lot more. I think it's going to take a little mind, my, uh, like mindset change um, from a customer dynamic, just to understand, you know, what you're buying, like that shirt, what's behind that. What's mm-hmm. like, I hate to even bring this into the conversation, but child labor is a huge, you know, issue in fashion. So sure. I think bringing awareness to that and then bringing back the excitement of, like I said, what a piece, what it means to you, how long will this last? Like, I, you know, I, I'm into investing in a few pieces versus just buying up like a ton of, you know, a whole wardrobe. So I think that's something I want to emphasize, especially for that young, like young teen, early adult market, because mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, there's either like Abercrombie and like Hollister for like young teens, or there's like a more like woman oriented brands. And so I kind of want to be that middle ground and help girls, you know, build their style and shape their style. Nice. Nice. So you're really targeting girls versus guys and girls. Yeah. Well, I say, yeah, I say girls right now. My company is for guys and girls. Okay. Um, good. It's, it started as all girls. And then I had, you know, I I have a, I have a brother that should be on this. I told him (laughs) that he needs to come on. Come on, bro. Where are you? I know. So, um, (laughs) I have a brother, but him him and his friends were always like, oh, we want to buy Hollis shirt. So I ended up starting a men's line as well. Um, just a, They're actually all unisex tees. So, okay. Because um, they're tees and sweatshirts for now. Um, but yeah, I am interested in men's bar. So we'll see where that goes. You know, I, I actually worked up in, in New York. I worked at a men's suiting store. So I, I got a lot oh, of experience cool. in like tailoring. Uh-huh. And so that's something I always knew I wanted to bring into my pieces as well. So we'll see. We'll see. But I, yeah, you know, no, just we'll being, have to watch being this. A, yeah, being a young girl, I feel like I want to put in where I didn't think so, like I thought something was missing. You know what I mean? I, I couldn't sure. find things that I want. So that's why I say young girl. But <laughs> well, I can relate to that because that's what you talk is all about. You know, we really felt mm-hmm. like there was something missing where we needed to connect with young adults, and there needed to be a place and bring people like yourself in and others that are innovative and making a difference and influencing. Okay, off the record, do you have big boy <laughs> sizes? <laughs> <laughs> I go up to two XL. Do you? Okay, so yes, I, should, I do. And, and I is do. it a normal two XL? Because I won't yes, mention another place, but I went in this other place. It's that's rather large, but hopefully you're going to be bigger than that. And I went to the two XL, and I thought, 
you know, this this is like for an Oompa Loompa, you know, I mean, it's, oh I'm goodness. a big guy, yeah. you know, it's like. Well, I hey, could, we can always do something custom, you know, okay. if that doesn't work out. Yeah, well, right now, um, I, I haven't released a new t-shirt collection in uh-huh. around a, a year, actually, because I was okay. just, I was abroad in Italy for the last year. Um, and, you know, then all the craziness broke out there. I oh, was yeah. In Mil- I was in Milan during the um, corona outbreak there, so it oh. was a... It was a time, but um, now my latest are the masks. So oh, these are really what's selling um, online. You got to buy Hollis, but yeah. Okay. So these yeah. are the big, the big thing, the big hit right now. So if somebody wants to buy something from you, because we'll come back to this too. But website is what? It's buyhollis.com and it's b y h o l l i s dot com. Okay, and we'll we'll yeah. make sure we put that on the blog, but we'll come back to that cool. too. Well, see, <laughs> you've already answered one of the my the questions I had was where do you see yourself in five, ten years, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it it's going to be fun to follow you and watch where you go and what you develop. Okay, you've got masks, you've got T-shirts. What else do you have? Buy Hollis sweatshirt. Um, and then I have, like I said, the tees. This is one of the tees, but a screen print. See, it's like a shark jaw. <laughs> That's the um, one I like, yes. Yeah, yes. the beach inspiration there. Um, For sure. So I do the graphic designs here, and then these I, I sew myself. But I do a lot of projects for school that I also am kind of slowly integrating into By Hollis. Nice. Um, like initially, nice. By Hollis was just strictly, you know, uh, like a, a brand, and I would sell my clothes in there. But now um, I'm trying to make it more of my brand as long, along with like me as a designer and what I'm doing okay. in school and just kind of taking – because I built up a little community with it. You know, I want to take them along with me and, and share what I'm doing in my classes. So – um, yeah, I've been working on a lot of like this semester we're doing knitwear. So I have a lot of knitwear pieces I'm putting up. Oh. I just did, um, like we did body suits and a lot of dresses I've done. So they're all up on my website under my portfolio. So, and you can see them too on, um, both by Hollis, the Instagram, and then my personal Instagram, which is in the bio. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, we, again, we got to remind people of those things. It's, I mean, you're just doing some, all kinds of, I mean, it's, you're not scattered, it seems to me that there's a there's a direction, there's a, a a purpose, there's there's a you know where you see yourself going. You're not just throwing mm-hmm. stuff out, you know, like trying to get yeah, it stick to the like, wall or something. Um, I feel like I'm a sponge right now in life. Okay, no, that's and, good. You know, I feel like it's what I've been trying to be since I started the brand, and just while I'm young, while I can soak up as much as I can, you know what I mean? Learn as much as I can That's huge. learn from different, like that's the whole reason I moved to port. So I moved to Portugal in high school. That was like, I I stayed with a host family there. I went to a Portuguese school there. So my school was not in English for an entire year. (laughs) So did you speak Portuguese before you went? Not before. No, but after I I can now, (laughs) thank goodness. Cause you know, I had to pass. The sure. Class, so. <laughs> you know, what a great experience. And did you pick up Italian? Cause they're similar. Yeah. I was able, um, I like colloquially, like I can, I can hold conversation, mm-hmm. you know, um, more or less, even though my brain now just gets them so confused. So I end up <laughs> speaking like half and half. Um, my, pr- my professors in Italy would think I was crazy. And I was like, no, I swear. And, and yeah, it was pretty funny. I actually had one guy, I was speaking Italian to, I, I was in Florence. And so I was speaking Italian to a local like shop owner. And he was sure. like, oh, are you, are you Portuguese? And I was like, oh my gosh, I was so honored. I was like, no, I'm American. He's like, then why do you have this weird accent? Oh, and interesting. I, I, I was going to say Yeah, that. isn't that funny? Oh. Isn't that funny? Oh, my brain just learned it the first way. And then, yeah. Sure. So oh, no, it's, it's, you know, it, it's funny because... I'm Italian and people, I mean, I've been over there, I've been in Europe and stuff and and people will come up and ask me if I speak Italian here in the States as well. And I say, well, you know what? I know all the bad words. (laughs) <laughs> all the cuss words. I know all of those, and I know how to say "feed me, I'm starving" in Italian. And you know, I learned important. that in every country. I, got. I mean, that's that's essential, you know. Yeah. And so, uh, no, it. What great experiences that will all continue, obviously, to build mm. in to who you are and what you do. Is there a favorite piece of clothing that you have created, mm. or do you have yeah. many favorites? I know. I, you know, I feel like it changes. <laughs> um, I, I think right now my favorite piece of clothing I did was actually, I started it in Florence and then I finished it in quarantine. <laughs> so it was, it was supposed to be um, displayed at, uh, in an exhibition in a museum in Florence, but um, nice. yeah, it was, it was inspired by um, like ancient Japanese armor and woodblock printing. So I okay. kind of pieced together. It, it's um, basically the stress is like a ton of different panels connected with little shoelace looking, Mm. you know, pieces of um, trim. And so 
that would be my favorite because I actually carved out my own um, print for that of a koi really? fish, and I, pr- I print it on the dress. Yeah, it was a it was a tedious process, oh, but um, yeah, it was so much fun, and I love the result. You can see the result on my my Instagram. Um, but I am actually um, shooting it next week, and I rented out a studio here in the city with one of my friends who is a professional photographer who also went to FIT, and then another good friend who she models. So we're going to be shooting that next week. Which we oh, really great fun. combo! Yeah. So how long did it take you to to cut this thing out? I mean, it. I mean, uh, it, the it took um, over definitely over a hundred hours, just because wow. or more. Like we, so when we do things, we start we make our own patterns. We drape things and, and pattern make things and we come up with our own patterns and then we we take that um to fabric so it's not just like sewing when i was when i was younger i would go to joanne fabrics and i would buy a pattern mm-hmm. and that so w- when you add in that extra time of actually making the pattern um, which i love making the patterns is so fun you can add like i really think what makes a designer stand out are little design details and so mm-hmm. with, pa- with pattern yes, making you yes. get to learn all these little like you know you can put fun little pockets or some make something really special to you and so with that added element it does take a little more time and then it it was a process so it it was so much fun i'm excited to shoot it that you know are you going to put the pictures up on social or on um, yeah definitely definitely. awesome we'll look for them and (laughs) those of you that are with us uh, today on today's show check it out stay in touch with by hollis our new friend hollis it's (laughs) now do you have to be a detail person to be a fashion designer? I would assume so. It's surprisingly, I would I would say I mean everyone has their own focus. Sure, you know what I mean. I feel like I, I there's it's a very eclectic bunch at my school and at most fashion schools. You mm-hmm. know, everyone has their own little thing that they are drawn towards. Um, like for me, I was saying it's it's detail oriented pieces and and tailoring. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of kids, it's it's other more like sportswear or like at streetwear, for example, like kind of street style with like sneakers and, and like kind of, you know, that athletic inspiration and in clothes. Mm-hmm. So I feel like everyone has their own little thing, but definitely if you get into the meticulous side of design, like pattern making, you have to have just a little emphasis on, you know, detail and, sure. you know, detail oriented nature. So. Yeah, you'd have to. Now question keeps going in my mind. Yeah. Is there a difference between style and brand hmm so are they one in the same or it seems like they're a little bit different but i'm not yeah, exactly sure i i would say two different when i think of brand i think of like a, a company that you know has their own message and their own kind of thing they're pushing and style is okay. something that's personal to the customer to the consumer so okay. i would say you know you take your style and you go out to all the different brands and you find brands that resonate with you and you kind of pull them together and, and that that combination of all the different brands that you end up choosing that's kind hmm. of your own personal style so okay. that's what I, I would think yeah but does by hollis have a style definitely um by hollis as the brand i would say yes, yes has their own style like i said kind of like surf shop um relaxed yeah like beach undertones mm-hmm. throughout the yeah. whole brand um, for sure. Especially cause it, you know, right now things are just t-shirts and sweatshirts. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't cut and sew these myself. I print I, like we print them, but mm-hmm. um, once I get into things more where I do the patterns and I can get them, you know, you need a team of seamstresses and you need, so it's yes. a, it's a huge task that I can't do while I'm in school um, right now. But as soon as I get out of school, it's definitely something. And um, when I have all that, <laughs> that time on my hands, um, <laughs> it's something I'm going to look into, but yeah, by Hollis definitely um, it's slowly, I feel like elevating a little bit. Like when I was yeah. more like relaxed surf shop and now I kind of want to take that and take it into like that, timeless beachy kind of feel. Oh, so I love kind it. Of where, yeah, love it's kind it. of where I'm heading for my brand. What advice would you give to somebody who's um, they're They've been listening to the conversation and they're saying, you know, I, I might like to do something like what Hollis yeah. does. Where, <laughs> where's the starting point? Do you start by going to school? I mean, the nice thing for you is you had this rich experience of running your own company, developing mm-hmm. it, doing some styles, doing the work, and now you're expanding what you mm-hmm. know, what you can do, and being in a very creative environment. I love those kind of environments to be around creative people because, in, at least for me, and I, I think you probably are the same way. It just spurs me on. It just pushes me. 100%, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's just a, it's an awesome experience. Hundred percent. Yeah, I would say for people that want to get into it, I would say evaluate where you are, evaluate your resources and in your environment, and see what you can get out of it. I wouldn't say jump right into school. School's really beneficial, but 
like I kind of hit upon this earlier, but the entire industry just changed, you know, mm -hmm. things are all moving online and, and practicality is, is super important. So I would just say, what do you want to add to the industry? And this can be general and like, and, and not even fashion. Okay. Anything. What, what do you want to add? Sure. Um, what, what do you think is missing? And just um, focus in on that. Try to learn from, I, you know, I love listening to podcasts. I love reading books. I love mm -hmm. talking to other people. Like I'm always mm -hmm. reaching out to people um, on LinkedIn or Instagram and just trying to um, make connections, find mentors in that way. When I was working at suit supply, that was like the coolest thing ever. The, the men's shop. I met like Tim Gunn from project runway and I worked oh. with him um, and we did I worked on some suits with him, which was really fun. And yes. of course, I was just picking his brain on the industry the whole time. So I would say just start dipping your toe in like anywhere you can and be strong and, and kind of your focus because it's so easy to get into like fashion specifically now it's so easy to get in and, and see all these other people's ideas and be like oh maybe I should be looking at that maybe I should be focusing on this more but I find like you know if you stay true to your vision stay true to what you're the most passionate about and um you put in the work that's the most important thing um and then and of course like it's so easy and i'm sure you, you can relate to this during quarantine it's so easy to get burnt out when you're kind of in the same room like oh, yes. i'm doing i'm doing everything i'm, I'm sleeping in here and doing all my garments <laughs> yeah. in here and doing so i am just in this room 24 7 yeah so it's easy to get burnt out but i and i think something we need to emphasize more in a lot of industries is that's super normal it's normal to not be like in love with what you're doing yes. with what your passion is all yes. the time. You know what I mean? Cause that's yes. just like an unrealistic standard. But the most important thing is even when you feel burnt out, take a little mental break and come back and just the next day, keep going. So I think really it's just about every day, um, every other day, sometimes like putting in the work toward, <laughs> towards the goal and, and um, realizing that you don't have to be like in love with it the whole time. Just be sure. in love with, in love with the final vision and where you want to be. Well, you've got to know who you are. You, you can't. And I know, I went through this when I started doing this kind of thing that I'm doing now is mm -hmm. um, it's easy. Oh, I want to be like him. I want to be like her. I want to hey, no, be who you are, know who mm -hmm. you are, know what your focus is, know what the goal is. Right. And then if you've got to take a breather, you've got to take a, you know, for me, sometimes it's going just sitting behind my drums and just, you know, taking yeah, that's a few so minutes. Good of, that you have you know, that outlet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because it's an yeah. outlet and, and yet it's part of what I do and who I am. So, no, great advice. And, and I'd, I'd encourage those of you that are thinking about that, put these pieces that Hollis has given us together because I think it's, it's something that, um, you know, it, it's a wide open door, and especially with the industry change, so much is changing yeah. in so many industries right now. Yeah. Everything is, and it's so intimidating, you know, to see oh, all that yes. change going on. But I've thought of it more as a blessing. I remember growing up and being like, "Oh, I just need my in. I need my in." And then here's coronavirus. As I'm about to graduate in a year, and I'm like, "Oh wow, this is my in." You know what I mean? Like everything sure. yeah. just shift, shifted. So I would say, be on your toes. You know, be looking out for where the gaps are and, mm -hmm. and where you where you can contribute. And, and just sharpen your skills all the time. You know, you really, it, you know, once you get, you can get in the door, but you need to be able to stay there. You yeah, know? exactly. So just, you know, keep, like you said, sharpen your skills. That goes for anybody and everybody, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what you're doing and stay focused and don't let something hold you back or someone hold you back, the coronavirus or anything else. And if you believe in yeah. yourself, keep going for it. We don't have to let things end because of the virus. We're really big here at Utah about making a difference and changing the world. And we all know things need to change. Um, things could be better. Um, what, what are you doing with By Hollis? To make a difference. Um, I know you are, but I want to hear you say, <laughs> yeah, it, you know, having been to definitely. your website, I think it's very cool. Very, very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I always, um, from starting by Hollis, you know, when I was 14, I, I was 15 when I could pay back all my investors. Um, mm -hmm. And then at that point I was like, all right, let's just have fun with this. Let's see what I can do. Let's stretch sure. this. Um, you know, I'm living at home. I was living at home still, obviously. So I, was okay, like, yeah. I really don't have like expenses out the wazoo right now. So yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm going to really um, take, what I can make and run, and run with it. So I was, um, I, you know, always very involved in my community and I knew I wanted to give back um, within the community. So mm -hmm. I actually partnered with um, different organizations like the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, the Four Diamonds Foundation, um, which is for pediatric cancer. Um, oh. who I actually had a friend pass away during that. So I did a shirt kind mm -hmm. of in her honor um, mm -hmm. with her family. And so that um, is called Amelia T. That was just kind of a really, mm -hmm. um, I would say like really important time for yes. the community and the brand in general, because, mm -hmm. it, and, and for me, it just taught me so much about, you know, what, what it's about, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it's mm -hmm. about connect, really connecting with people and just, you know, 
supporting one another and um, in the community, you know, I grew up in central Pennsylvania. It's, it was a really tight knit community and it brought us mm-hmm. so close. And I just know um, her parents would, would say, um, you know, they'd see her shirt, someone wearing out her, her shirt and they're like, Oh, we just love seeing that. You know what I mean? So just oh. well, that, that really like touched my heart and it really is something that I carry Absolutely. with me now. And I, I want to make sure I keep continuing um, with the brand someday, like making sure we're giving back mm-hmm. um, in some way or another. So yeah, I worked with then um, the, um, Project Lime, did a shirt with them. And then my most recent um, kind of ch- uh, charitable um, things where I, I was partnering with the masks, I started selling the mask over quarantine. Um, mm-hmm. And initially I, I put sent the proceeds to um, food banks in Pennsylvania and New York City. And so we were actually able to cool. give um, around two over 2,000 meals. So that was awesome wow. during quarantine. Yeah, it, it was really, awesome. um, right, just from your house. You know what I mean? I was just uh-huh. at my house yeah. sewing and, and you're able to do something. So I, there's always ways to help out. There's always ways it. to give back. And I think that um, that was so fun. And now we have, then for the second half of the summer, we had um, proceeds benefiting the Loveland Foundation, which, mm-hmm. um, you know, goes into um, primarily like black communities and helps um, mm-hmm. just kind of um, – build like a community there and um Mm -hmm. give like safe safe spaces and and have open conversations so that's um the most recent um charitable foundation we work you know i love what you're doing in fact my mind's turning here because we may have to commission you for a special (laughs) shirt we started doing something a few years ago called the rock and red experience and it was a, a an event for homeless or those who were had a you know a non stable uh, housing environment, young mm-hmm. adults in Hollywood, and uh, unfortunately we can't do it this year, obviously. But mm-hmm. uh, we've already had a call from other Phoenix, Arizona has contacted us saying, "Hey, can you if this thing's going to be over?" You know, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of homeless teens yeah. in the Phoenix area. You know, so it's um, and it's such a cool thing to. Uh, I mean, I, I love seeing their faces when they come. And we have this whole program, which is a whole other story. But, um, you know, I, I understand that aha experience that yeah, you have right. giving back. I love what you're doing. You need to keep us informed, um, things like that you're involved in, so we can let other people know. Because for sure, if for nothing sure. else, it could it could spur them on to say, you know, and, and that, that brings me to, to I guess, what is it that we could do as individuals? Okay, you have this company, you have this amazing creative ability, you're a creative genius, you know, and, and you're growing in the fashion. I mean, it's, it's, it's very cool. But what can we do as just individuals? You know, somebody listening, oh, that's really nice for her. Hollis has a company. You know, what am I supposed to do? Well, I think we can all do something to make a difference. Well, what would you suggest? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say um, this is kind of always always my answer because it's you can anyone can do this. Um, mm-hmm. Just just be understanding of, t- towards other people and be kind. Okay. So it's such a simple statement, but really, if we all approach different situations throughout the day, even when you're just walking around the street, just you know, understanding what someone else is going through, understanding that you don't know what they're going through, and yeah, just being yeah. being kind to to everyone you see, um, because especially like here in New York, there's people, you know, just connections everywhere. And so Mm -hmm. I found that like, you know, people that aren't pleasant to work with tend to not get hired. And so just starting out with like that professionalism um, in your day to day and just being, being a nice person in general, it really, it really helps out. Um, And I think that it's so, it's so easy, right? I know. And it sounds, it sounds so silly to say, but I think like, especially with the turmoil of our country right now, like just mm-hmm. having the understanding towards everyone and, and res- overall respect and, you know, honoring, yes. honoring every person you meet, don't hold yourself higher. I think that's like the biggest thing that every day I remind myself, you know, to, to go out with that um, mindset. And so mm-hmm. I would say that's, that's from um, just the smallest level, how you can make a difference. You know, no, what I mean? that's, that's huge. That is so huge. Hoss, because you know, the thing about being kind, uh, it doesn't take that. It isn't hard to do that. In fact, we started yeah. a campaign oh, a little over a year ago, and we need to develop it more. But we called it hashtag goodbye the number two and mean because people mm. are just mean and and people. It's so good it, on social media too because I feel like that's the biggest yeah. culprit. And I, it's, oh, it, it's interesting to me because our generation, our my generation, you know, we kind of grew up on social media, and so yes. how, how our our people skills are just not saying they're worse; they're just different. You know, we yeah. communicate differently, mm-hmm. and so I think it's always something to keep in mind that um, behind the screen is another person just like us. So it's, you yeah. know, it's, it's a very important, um, very important message. Yeah, there, I mean, 
we've lost sense of what it means to be human. And I think if we could just be kind, so much would change. Hey, um, we could continue. We got to have you back on the show. I, I, uh, oh, it's so great getting to talk oh, to you. Oh, it's just great having a conversation with you. Once again, how can people follow you on social, your website? Because that's very important. I really want people to get engaged with what you're doing and connect with you and connect Definitely. with the company. Yeah, I would, I would love um, for people to reach out and connect. So my website is byhollis.com, spelled B Y H O L L I S dot com. The Instagram is the same, byhollis. And then if you want to see some of my more like personal design side um it's hollis colmansberger um i don't want to spell it out <laughs> you're not going to remember it so <laughs> we'll we'll go, put it in the, blog. the okay. hollis bio yes thank you i mean hollis this has been so amazing much. and i look forward to our next conversation because yes, it, it's too. just rich you know and i've learned from you some things that i really appreciate appreciate your attitude your creativity it's so contagious you. you know the attitude about changing the world is contagious so um, we will look forward to, to um, having more conversations with you. Yes. And yes. Uh, thanks for taking time out of a busy yes, schedule. Thank you. You know, and, and be safe and be careful out there. Because I love too, New York City, definitely. but uh, boy, it oh, it's crazy. It's a crazy city. <laughs> it's a crazy yeah, it's, city. It's but a place it's, <laughs> right now. But no, I it love really it. really is. Love it. Oh, thank you again. And uh, thank thanks, you. thanks for night. inspiring. You too. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. This is Utah Radio. 